we can do the meeting with four uh, okay. if need be. Okay. But I think Joan will be on. Okay. The appointed hour of six o'clock having been reached, I welcome everyone to this meeting of the Amherst Board of Appeals, Zoning Board of Appeals. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This public hearing of the Town of Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of, this, of members of the public will be permitted, but the public can listen to the proceedings by clicking on a link on the town's webpage. In accordance with provisions of the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. My name is Steve Judge, as chair of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals, I call this meeting to order. The Zoning Board is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purposes of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. One of the most important elements of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw is Section 10.38. Specific findings from this section must be made for all of our decisions. There are copies of section 10.38 available on the uh, town website. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for care clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the, public will, the board will seek public input the public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should do so by indicating uh, in using their raise hand function on their screen. The chair with the assistance of the staff will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, present your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where information about the project and input from the public is gathered, followed by a public meeting for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition is heard by the board is distinct and is evaluated on its own merit, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily, for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of the hearing to file a decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of filing to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the three, by sitting, the five sitting board members and is filed in the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there is a 20 day, 20 day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body in Superior Court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Tonight, we have the following agenda. A public meeting to consider ZBA 202036, Jay Silverstein, request a review of an updated site plan pursuant to conditions nine and 16 of the previously approved special permit ZBA 2016-23 located at 32 North Prospect Street, map 14A, parcel 32, General Residence RG Zoning District. A public hearing to consider ZBA FY 2020-35, Amherst Colonial Village, request a special permit for a modification under section 10.33 of the zoning bylaw to the previously approved special permit ZBA FY, uh, FY 1964 to modify conditions one and eight for the proposed playground located at Colonial Village Apartments, 200 Southeast Street, map 15C, parcels 10, 16, 17, and 36, neighborhood residents, RN Zoning District. 
and Zoning Board of Appeals rules and regulations to review the Zoning Board of Appeals rules and regulations in order to bring them into compliance with the Amherst Home Charter Rule and to review other necessary updates, including submission requirements and Zoning Board of Appeals procedure. This item has been continued until May, from May 21st, 2020 meeting, and it is my intention to continue the hearing on this item until June 11th. After concluding its scheduled business, the board will entertain public comments on subjects not on tonight's agenda. The agenda, as you can see, is on the, is on the um, Zoom website currently. I have recused myself for the first agenda item. The panel will consist of Mr. Langsdale, Ms. O'Meara, Ms. Parks, Mr. Maxfield, and Ms. Waldman. Mr. Langsdale will be the acting chair. Also attending for the town is Marine Pollock, planner and ZBA staff, and Dave Wachshevitz, uh, lead building inspector. With that, uh, the first item on the agenda is uh, ZBA FY202036. And Keith, as acting chair, why don't you take over? Um, leading the, the board. Thank you. Um, do we have Mr. Silverstein? Yes, I, I'm, I'm pulling him up to become a panelist as we speak. Uh, Jay, can you hear us? You, you uh, need to unmute yourself. Jay? Yeah. Hi, Jay. You can hear me now? I can, we can hear you now. Uh, do you have access to a camera? Uh, can you hear me now? Now I can, yes. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I, I, is that good enough or you have to see me? No, that's, that's fine. Can you see us? Yeah, I can see you. Okay, so I could pull up your uh, site plan. Um, so just bear with me for a moment. Let's see here. And um, so Keith, uh, if you just want to ask, well, let me pull it up and then you uh, can ask him. Yeah. Yeah, there's. Go ahead. Let me, let me proceed. Sure. Um, so this is ZBA 2020-36, Jay Silverstein, 32 Prospect Street, uh, the house number three. Uh, we had a site visit yesterday, uh, Wednesday, May 27th at 12 p.m. Uh, we were met Yes, but it was, it's unit number four, not number three. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, we were Hello? met by, let me, let me, let me proceed. We were met by Mr. and Mrs. Silverstein at the back of the condo. Uh, we observed the existing deck that is there, uh, which is made of treated wood um, with um, no step down, or one step down, excuse me. Uh, we also uh, checked the boundaries of the proposed deck uh, against the house and a question was asked uh, how far it would come out from the house into the yard. Uh, then the other question that was asked was what are sono tubes? Um, we have uh, with us, oh, does anyone on the panel have anything else they would like to say of the, uh, in terms of what we observed? Yes. Sorry, I'm unmuted. Mark. Um, I was just going to add, I, um, it was also mentioned that there would be um, PVC railings and uh, two by 12 pressure treated joists and treks for the top boards. All right, we'll get into that when we get into the design of the piece itself. Okay. Um, so uh, we have with, we have uh, the submission from the applicant, the as built plan uh, prepared uh, by uh, Randall Iser, dated April 30th, 2020. We have the proposed deck layout. We have the proposed deck perspective. And we have an email from Jay Silverstein, dated April 1st, 2020. Um, we have from planning staff, the project application report. 
uh, dated May 22nd, 2020. Uh, the special permit decision dated uh, August 12th, 2016, uh, FYI 2016-23. Then we also have uh, <clears throat> FYI 26-23, the public meeting summary dated February 21st, 2019, and the uh, ZBA 2020-33, public meeting summary dated March 23rd, 2020. Um, so, um, if Mr. Silverstein, if you will please uh, present your proposal. Uh, well, basically I'd like to put in uh, 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 an eight, uh, a 10 by eight deck. Uh, it will be eight feet from the house going out, uh, 10 feet along the house, it will come out, uh, th there's a rear door to the uh, uh, house as well as a window. So it would be um, uh, out in front of, the, in front of that. Uh, there'll be a, uh, a white uh, vinyl railing going around the deck. Uh, Is that all? Hello? Jay, can you hear us? Her what, you know, what uh, I'm looking for. There'll be three uh, sonar tubes uh, for concrete uh, uh, underneath for the joists. Mm -hmm. I, what else? Uh, I had sent everything to my neighbors. No, no one seemed to uh, mind. Uh, the neighbor, I have one neighbor who has the, a deck also an eight by 10. And uh, and the reason I know it, their deck is eight by 10 because I told her, I, I told them I wanted to put in a deck and I would make it the same size as theirs. And that's when they measured their deck and told me it was eight by 10 as well. So, so we're gonna remove the old deck and hopefully put in a new deck. And, and will the deck be the same height as the present one? Yes. Okay. So there, there will be a step down to the deck from the inside. Correct. Onto the deck. Correct. Okay. Um, so what we're dealing with here is the, um, the proposed change and uh, the, uh, the uh, footprint of the new deck and uh, the uh, coverage of the building, the lot coverage and the building coverage for the site. Um, as proposed, um, the uh, new deck would bring the, um, let me see, the, the new deck would bring the, uh, the total building coverage to 22.2% and the lot coverage to 39.9%, both under the um, requirement, but the deck would be uh, just 0.1% uh, under that requirement. So we have on the uh, as built, could you put that up please? Oh, there we go. So um, the as built uh, shows the deck to be eight by 10, but it does not show steps. Um, the other uh, deck layout and the deck perspective show steps. So the question then becomes, if, we're add, if you're adding the steps to an eight by 10 deck, 
uh, that increases the uh, coverage uh, above what's uh, allowed. So, um, the, so what we're looking at isn't complete. So what we need to know is, are you adding steps? And if you are adding steps, um, what adjustments can be made to the new deck to keep the uh, entire deck and steps within the uh, uh, allotted uh, coverage. We, we, we could cut into the, uh, the deck itself, uh, go back. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a difference of about four and three quarter square feet uh, to, to two steps. Right. Uh, the, the average step, uh, is, so if we cut into the deck, 19 inches, we would come out uh, at the, the uh, eight foot deck line. Or, okay. And therefore it would be the same coverage. Right, right. Um, does anyone on the panel have any questions or comments to make at this point? Uh, can I just make uh, an observation at this point? Yes. Um, so the, the site plan that you're looking at gives you a, a number, and I can't see what that number is right uh, now. I'll show it. Uh, uh, For, down here. So I did confirm with a surveyor that the number that he shows, the uh, 13,433 square feet, included the new deck, subtracted the old deck. So the, uh, that number is still under the 40%. And from my calculation, um, it was uh, leaving about 71 feet. But what we would like to have, at least the building department would like to have, would be an updated site plan that actually says proposed because it was unclear when this was submitted that existing included that deck. Um, usually what you would do is you'd say existing, give it a number, and then with the deck added to that site plan, say proposed, showing the new number. Um, so that would be something that we would like to see at some point, and that could be decided when we would get that. But I th still think there was room to add the stairs as long as we can confirm that with a survey. Yeah, uh, like I sa said, the stairs uh, would be about four, point, uh, four and three quarter square feet. Okay. Uh, part of the reason we're asking this, Mr. Silverstein, is that we have two different things showing. Uh, we have a, the uh, as built without the steps, and then we have the uh, other two pieces of information with the steps. So we just need to have this all uh, work, be the same. So let me ask you, uh, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Musk, uh, would it be possible to grant this uh, application with the proviso that before a permit is submitted is is given that the information that you need would be delivered to you and if you deemed it as being within the parameters or that it's de minimis, that you can go ahead and approve it and, and give the permit without him having to come back to us? I think it would be possible, but I wouldn't consider the steps de minimis. I'd want that included in the calculation. And that is- no, I, I, Yes, I mean, but de minimis yeah. in, 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 the, in the sense that it, it wouldn't need then to come back to us. But it would I have to have you, the steps in it, certainly. I think you could make that a condition if you wanted to. Okay, do we have any discussion from the other members? Nothing? Uh, you know, in an email exchange between Dave Waskevitz and, and Rob Mora and myself, I don't know, I don't know if you guys still see the site plan or the email that I'm pulling up. What do we you see think? the email right now. Oh, okay. 
So it seems that Rob Mora has suggested that the board could put a condition stating that that the surveyor uh, calculations not exceed 40% lot coverage prior to the issuance of the building permit. Uh. And so if it did exceed it, then uh, the applicant would need to come back before the board. Or what do you think about that, Dave? Or reduce well. the size. Mm -hmm. And so in essence, the, the board and the planning department would still need an updated site plan. And uh, as long as it doesn't exceed 40%, the board would be satisfied and so would uh, the planning and inspector services. All right, so, so what we're looking at is <clears throat> granting the application with the proviso that uh, the survey's calculation does not exceed the 40% prior to the issuance of the building permit, but it also means that they would have to come back to uh, the building department with uh, new plans that show the steps, as well as the um, calculation on the, uh, that doesn't exceed the, the allowable. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So an updated site plan would be required showing the steps and the site plan would require updated uh, calculations for lot and building coverages. Okay. And it shall not exceed 40% for lot coverage. Okay. Uh, So, um, so then I, I will uh, make a motion that we uh, grant this application um, with the uh, condition that uh, a, a new site plan is provided to the uh, building commissioner and that the lot and building coverage cannot exceed 40%. Well, the building coverage is its own percentage. Uh, he, well, he does not, he's not close to exceeding that. Um, the building coverage in that zoning district is uh, 25% and he's at 22.2%. Right. So it's a non-issue, but yeah. Okay. And that that, that those, uh, those need to be uh, submitted before the issuance of a building permit. Correct. I was going to say, add those words. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, are we good, Murray? Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Do I have a second? Uh, I would second. Actually, before we get into that, I don't, uh, not, to, not to just hold this up, I think is my own inexperience here with this. I'm understanding what is, um, what exactly is the, the piece that says he can't exceed uh, 40%? Where exactly is that um, in the bylaw? Yeah, that's, sure. uh, go ahead. Uh, table, um, it's in the dimensional requirements. So if you go to page 80, it's table three dimensional regulations. And let's see here, this property is located in the uh, general residence zoning district. And so if you go to maximum lot coverage percentage is 40%. Uh, are you at that page yet? No, I'm sorry, what's the page number? Uh, page 80. 80 if you're looking on a PDF, it's off by a couple pages. But if you're looking at a hard copy, it's 
80, page 80. I'm sorry, what's the, uh, the header name of it? Lot coverage? Uh, yeah, maximum lot coverage. Uh, 3.257. 3.2, it's table three, dimensional regulations. It looks like this. Yeah, I think I'm there. Yeah. I, uh, okay, yeah. so yeah. And so if you look at, um, it is the third to last row, uh, maximum lock coverage. And then if you go over to R RG, that's re uh, general residence. Yep. It says 40%. Now, so what, in, so then maybe the next logical question is what is law coverage? And so law coverage would be all impervious surfaces and uh, buildings um, that have three sides to them. Mm. Um, so like uh, the pavement, decks, steps, buildings, sheds, pools, they don't have any pools here, um, uh, those sorts of things. And so those would all be calculated and then, div and then divided by the total lot area, which in this case is 33,761 square feet. And then that's where you would get that percentage. Now, uh, as the board, if um, Mr. Silverstein were asking to exceed that, do we have the authority to grant that? Or it's the case that um, that's not what's being asked for here? They're not asking for that. And if they did want to exceed the 40% uh, maximum al allowed, they would be required to seek a variance for it. Because yeah. it is not allowed in Amherst to um, exceed, exceed the building or lot coverage for a conforming, uh, a, a conforming lot. Got it. So, and then uh, I can, am I able to address uh, Mr. Silverstein directly? No, it's all, you all can, through, all through the you, chair. You, well, you can, no, you can direct, if you have questions for him, yes, you can. Yes. Direct uh, so I, I guess my question here is then, um, is it that we, we would, you would want to go with uh, Keith um, Langsdale's proposal here? of adjusting everything to stay inside that or would it be the case that you would be looking to do a variance for those steps as well no i i don't need it because uh between the um uh the 40 percent lot coverage and the present lot coverage that uh we we've used there's 71.4 square feet um uh, uh available and the uh, steps are only four and three quarters. So there'd still be about uh, 67 square feet, 66, 67 square feet available. So I wouldn't need a variance. Uh, I'd still be under the uh, existing total lot coverage. Okay. All right. Yep. That was, uh, that answers my questions. Um, if you want to make your, your motion and Keith, I, I can second you there. Okay, good. So we've got a motion and a second. Uh, we have to do this, um, let's see, we have to vote individually, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'll call on um, <clears throat> Mr. Maxwell. Maxfield and I Maxfield, vote. Maxfield, I'm sorry. No worries. What's your vote? Aye. Thank you. Ms. Waldman? Aye. Ms. O'Meara? Is not with us still? No, uh, no she, well, she was. Oh. No, she's uh, um, on mute. Okay, Joan? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. You We're can back. hear me now? Yes. yes. So I had some definite technical difficulties, so I'm doing this via phone. Okay. Um, so I missed the last, you know, few minutes. What, what are we... What is the current proposal? Okay, we, we have uh, a motion and seconded. Uh, we're voting. And uh, what we're proposing is to uh, grant this application with the uh, conditions that they have uh, new site plans, uh, uh, 
and uh, regarding with the addition of the steps and that uh, the uh, lot and building coverage cannot exceed 40% and that those two pieces of information have to be delivered to the building department before any uh, building permit can be uh, uh, given. Got it, okay. Uh, just one so, correct. Uh, yes. Go ahead. The, uh, the building coverage is not a question. It was just the lot coverage. Lot coverage. Forward. Thank you. So I vote aye. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Parks? Aye. Okay, and I vote aye as well. All right, so uh, it passes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Silverstein. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. Okay. Uh, Ma Maureen, uh, with your permission, I'd like to email you because I still have a, a, a couple of just uh, questions I, I'd like to uh, ask you about. Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, feel free to send me an email and I, I can certainly give you a phone call tomorrow if that's easier. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. And with that, I turn the meeting back over to uh, the chairman. Great. Thank you, Keith. Um, the next order of business is ZBA FY 2020-35 Amherst Colonial Village requesting a special permit for modification under section 10.33 of the zoning bylaw to the previously approved special permit ZBA FY 1964-29 to modify conditions one and eight for the proposed playground located at Colonial Village Apartments, 200 Southeast Street, map 15C, parcels 10, 16, 17, and 36. Neighborhood residents are in zoning district. Um, we have received uh, from the applicant the submission of an as-built plan, uh, proposed deck, uh, excuse me, wrong thing, uh, a special permit application a letter from the Colonial Development Company dated April 9th, 2020, photographs of playground equipment, proposed playground plans prepared by Huntley Associates dated April 10th, 2020, three specifications sheets for a bench, a proposed litter receptacles and proposed bicycle rack. We also have a project application report submitted by the staff, which includes the special permit granted in 1964 Special Permit 6429. Um, there was a site visit conducted on, on yesterday that I could not attend, although I, I subsequently viewed the property myself. I wonder if somebody would, who was at that site visit would like to um, summarize the site visit uh, for the record. Uh, yes, I would. <clears throat> We met Mr. Khan and uh, we looked at the area for the proposed playground and um, we, and the uh, position of the parking on the uh, west side of that uh, area. The area is between two um, uh, apartment uh, buildings. Uh, at the end of the parking area is uh, where the dumpsters for that area uh, with um, uh, fencing around three sides of it. Um, the, uh, there was also just north of that uh, dumpster uh, an existing swing set and a slide um, that have been there for some years apparently. Um, the, uh, there were a couple of questions asked, one about the proposed screening for shading uh, and uh, picnic tables uh, which are not on the plan. Um, the existing uh, questions ask if the existing play equipment would stay or be removed. And then a uh, question was asked, asked regarding what kind of ground cover would be used. And that's what I have. Any other um, observations or questions asked at the uh, Ms. Parks? Um, I, I did ask about um, 
uh, whether a full parking lot um, would uh, create a problem for um, trash collection for the dumpsters. And uh, Mr. Cohn said he did not think that was so. All right. Uh, so with that, Mr. Khan, uh, is that who's on for the applicant? It looks like Alan. Alan, can you hear us? I, I can. I am on and I just got my computer working. I actually listened to the first hearing on my phone, so I apologize. Um, I, I did not, I lost my internet connection in my house. Um, and my engineer, Mike Schaefer, is on also. Oh, okay. Uh, I think I see uh, um, there's a Samsung that is present. My guess is that is Michael. So, uh, Michael, if that's you, I'm going to promote you as a panelist. Hold on one second. Let's see if this is Michael. Oh, wait, that is not Michael. I don't know who this is. Samsung. Well, you know what? The Samsung is mine. I'm going to, I'm going to unplug my phone phone because that was the way I thought I was going to have to tune in but somehow I moved to another room and I got the I got the internet back so let me disconnect this so I don't create any problems okay and um, I just uh Michael is um coming in right now let's see here uh, Michael okay, I'm gonna good. unmute you or try to how about now perfect yeah I was kicked out for some reason and then I was reloaded so I'm good Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so I'm sorry that I don't have my my picture on the screen, but I, I I don't see how I can I don't can't do that right now for whatever reason. That's okay. Um, if, somebody, if somebody can instruct me as to how to do it, I'm glad to take the the um, the teaching. Sure. Oh, can you, uh, oh go oh, ahead, Maureen. Oh, go um, ahead. sorry, sorry. Uh, on the bottom left of your screen, you should see a mute button. And then to the right of the mute button, there's a, it says, it should say uh, start video. Yes. Click that. Okay. Uh, choose video setting, I guess. Nope, that's not it. There could be um, some setting on your computer or laptop that is preventing you, or maybe your computer doesn't have a camera. Uh, I, see the, I see the little hole up I think it's there, but all right. Well, you know what? I don't want to. I don't want to eat into your, you know, your evening time. So, um, you know, we. I, I can as long as you can hear me, Mike and I can answer your questions, and we can make the presentation. And hopefully, that'll, you know, that'll be sufficient. Okay. Go ahead and do that, and we have your your uh, site plans and documents that we can pull up uh, as we need them. Okay. So you can refer to those, and we can pull them up for for everybody to view. Okay, Maureen, excellent. do you want to give me uh, control so I can scroll around the uh, picture? Yeah, I think you could. Um, can you? Can, yeah, try it right now. Can you share a screen? I don't have. Uh, oh, yes, I do. Okay. Uh, there we go. All okay. right. Let me, let me pull it up. Bear with me. I had it up a moment ago. Sure. Okay, so nope, that's yours. Sorry about that. I had it up and then I lost it. Hold on. All right, so this is our revised application. Let me go down to the drawing. All right, so ta da. Okay. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Taking off your pretty pictures. All right. So, um, hi, my name is Mike Schaefer. I'm with uh, Huntley Associates in Northampton. And uh, as we, I will share with you today uh, what we currently have and what we're proposing. Uh, as you know, Alan is looking to install a playground using some existing equipment. Uh, and we provided a plan for that and submitted the application on his behalf. Uh, so basically what we have right now is we have two buildings, a number of sidewalks, an existing parking lot. Can you see my cursor okay? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, so these are all existing buildings uh, with existing sidewalks and a large grass area, uh, it, as well as uh, this is the existing uh, parking lot and the dumpster and fence is right here. 
uh, the swings you are were speaking of, I, I believe, are over in this direction over here. So uh, what we are proposing at this point is just to give you a little bit of a blow up first. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Basically, we have a rectangular playground area. These are showing the offset distances from the building. Uh, I will show you a blow up of this so you can see a little bit more of that. We are also adding in a sidewalk uh, here, connecting this existing sidewalk from this building to the playground area, as well as on the opposite side, uh, so that uh, you know people don't have to cross the lawn, or and, and most people will cross the lawn, but really if it's for ADA accessibility into the playground area, should that need arise. Okay, uh, with that, uh, originally, when we had submitted a proposal, we were talking about doing some expansion to the parking lot. Uh, we have at this point taken it out and have really focused on primarily this area is being the area of interest and the area that we will be affecting. So what you have here is a blow up of this dashed line area on the proposed plan that kind of shows the layout, if you will, of the, um, of the playground area. We have a main, uh, uh, main playground structure. I can show you the pictures. I mean, you have them too, but I can go to those in a minute. That basically is encompassed in this, uh, rather than trying to draw it all out, we just kind of took the outer limits and it's within this area here that you see that's dashed. Uh, the outside limit here is the limits of the playground. And then the various pieces of equipment, all the pictures of which you have are shown in here together with the safe use distances that are required per the uh, consumer, U.S. consumers requirement for public playgrounds. I referenced that document in note one in the bottom right corner. I, can, I go right there. So this one, it's the use distances required in the performance of public playground safety handbook from the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission 2015. Um, so we're basically, uh, creating a 42 by 70 landscape timber perimeter, which will be flush with grade so that nobody is stepping over and tripping or anything like that. And the area down, the area within the, uh, within the playground area will basically have a landscape timber. We are gonna put a weed control fabric. So we're gonna be digging down from the existing grade, putting a weed control fabric down to uh, minimize uh, any deep rooted weeds. Obviously there always is a potential of weeds growing in the surface, but then they'll, they'll easily be able to pull out and the, the playground maintained. And we are using a playground wood uh, grade wood mulch surface on the interior, uh, which uh, Taylor Davis, uh, who you probably all know, uh, is able to provide and agrees that's what we should do. There was some discussion about putting rubber down there, but if you've been following some of the uh, uh, some of the rubber that's been used at some of the high schools and things like that. It's probably not the best thing to put. And, uh, you know, I don't want any kids digesting rubber, if you will. I mean, wood is wood. <laughs> not that it should be de digesting that either, but uh, it certainly is a natural product versus a, uh, you know, a rubberized a synthetic product. The sidewalks will be basically built uh, with having eight inches of stabilized uh, crushed stone and then uh, one and a half inch uh, hot mix uh, asphalt, which is probably more than what we have on any other sites, any other uh, of the parking lots at this point. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that it was very stable and that there wouldn't be any issues with that. Uh, there is no, uh, the application, uh, per the application, uh, there is no signage, there is no uh, site lighting proposed. Uh, and what was your other question, Maureen? Uh, oh, and the uh, the access or uh, the sidewalks and that are uh, ADA accessible. Uh, the only area that uh, we have a small issue that's not shown on this uh, plan that uh, we would accept as a condition uh, for approval is to make sure. Hold on, my computer's not acting so f doesn't that, for some reason the computer's not work as fast when you're on Zoom. I don't know why. Uh, but in this area here, there is a small lip that we will remove and that we will make sure that there is ADA accessibility, uh, that there's no lip there, basically. There's a small uh, asphalt uh, Cape Cod type berm uh, there right now, which will be removed uh, as a condition of approval for you uh, so that uh, 
you know, that we make sure that anybody that, that does come by vehicle that uh, is a, that requires ADA accessibility, uh, that that little hump there, I think it's like four inches or something, uh, will not be a problem. And for the most part, that is the scope of the project at this point. Um, so, you know, if there are any questions, oh, let me go back. Uh, we are, I forgot to mention, we are not putting any kind of picnic benches down. We are putting park benches down. You have in your package the actual park bench that we are planning to propose there, as well as trash barrels, one on each side, so that if there are any parents that come and they want to sit while they're watching their children, they have the availability to do that. And we are also adding a bike rack uh, here. The reason we put the bike rack here, because this is the shortest distance, if you will, from the parking lot. Uh, doesn't take much. I think we can all remember when we were children, uh, you know, there were, nobody ever uses sidewalks on a playground. They all run over the grass. And I don't even, you know, we were proposing a bike rack, but in my days, uh, even if there was a bike rack, we kind of jumped off our bike and the bike landed wherever it was as we were running to the playground. But we are, install, we are providing one nonetheless. Uh, okay, let me, I can show you quickly the equipment. You can stop me anytime if I'm being too excessive. No, this is helpful, continue. Okay, so uh, here is the seesaw. This is the actual, these are the actual units that we, uh, that Alan will be acquiring and that we will be reinstalling uh, on Alan's property. So uh, this is the uh, ladder or arch ladder. You know, kids kind of climb over it. The seesaw, the pull-up bars, balance beam. This is kind of, they throw balls and it comes out of the holes. This is the playground structure. It's a function of slides and uh, bridges and towers. Everything is plastic. It's just another view of it. Mm -mm. Another view of it. So those, that's kind of what we're installing here. Um, let me go and show you the... Uh, hope I'm going the right direction. Oh, I'm not. All right, where is it? Where are you looking for? There we go. Oh, that, there you go. Uh, so this is the bike rack. Uh, we're installing basically um, uh, a four hump. It's about 85 inches long, enough for f uh, nine bikes. Probably excessive, but, uh, you know, providing it nonetheless. Uh, we are using a uh, covered trash barrel, a uh, flat cover. Um, and we are providing a bench with a backrest, uh, eight foot on each side. So trying to keep everything Can I ask green. you a, qu so, a, quick, a quick question about the benches? What's the material coverage there? Is it, it's not just a raw metal. It's, is it some kind of plasticized or rubberized um, It's surface? punched steel. And there's nothing, just punched steel? It looks like rubber, but it's punched steel. It says coated. I didn't know what that. That's entailed. just the coating uh, uh, on it itself. Um, it. Okay. Hey, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Ms. Um, yep. One of my concerns was that there's so much sun exposure in that in this design that there's no shade available at all. And I'm wondering if there could be some modifications to the design to consider that factor. Well, do you have something in mind right now with uh, those, that, that playground that's there now that we're taking it from is all open as well. And the only- Right. And it's the, pretty naked, bare bones kind of landscaping there. Um, and I was wondering since you're not going to be doing the picnic tables, I had inquired about umbrellas for the tables to give the parents some shade. But I'm wondering uh, whether you would consider some shade trees where the benches are going to be as a possibility to keep the parents more comfortable while they're watching their kids. Uh, well, just so you know, I mean, putting in a shade tree is going to take a number of years before they mature, right? Well, it depends what size you put in. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, well, we have, you know, right now we have an existing playground. We have some swings. We have a playground that's actually on the other end of the property that's kind of defunct at this point. That's one of the reasons why Alan wanted to put something nicer and a little bit more central to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, to the. No, I, I agree. It's it's a worthwhile project. I'm just trying to. It's there's a lot of sun exposure right there. I, I would propose that we evaluate that because one of the things we do have is that we will probably have sun exposure more around noontime because we are relatively close to two very tall buildings. Uh, I've not really looked at the sh the uh, the sh the, uh, the shadows that were cast by these buildings, but. Uh, where my mouse is right now, this is east, right? And over here is west. So the sun basically is going to come across and there, this area very likely will be in some shade for a period of time. There are I, some- I didn't experience that when we were there on site. Uh, what time were you there, ma'am? Uh, was We were there 1230. Yeah, I would, that's gonna be when the sun will be at the highest location. So it will be directly over it. Obviously these buildings aren't going to affect uh, the sun being directly over the site. I'm thinking more of like in the morning and the evening hours where we would have some shade. Um, I know it's a, a more cost to the project, but I would wonder if that would be a condition that we could uh, put on the application. I, I do know that we are, we are coming, uh, as Maureen will testify, uh, we are coming, we actually came to the planning board for a larger project. There is going to be some, probably some future development in this area. We are talking about under the future project proposing a basketball court here as well. The future project is of a much grander scale than this parking or than this playground area. Uh, I would, uh, I would like to propose that um, Maureen, knowing that what we're planning on, what we're designing right now, and planning on coming to that maybe we take a look at this and relook at the landscaping overall or make the landscaping part of that project uh, to allow us, because if, I'm afraid if I put trees in here now, it's gonna affect something else that we might wanna do. And like Where's I said, the one, of, one, of, one of the Where's things- Where's the court going? One of the things we're proposing under the bigger project is probably to put a basketball court here. So, you know, putting any kind of trees, for example, south of this uh, is going to inhibit us doing that or having us to remove the trees that we just put in. So um, I would request from the board that, uh, that at least not make it go away, but at least in the bigger discussions, make it a discussion, make it a discussion for that time when we present the, when we present the larger playground area, if you will. Mr. Schaefer, perhaps another thing you could, that you should think about is I have seen um, shade structures that, which involves um, metal posts with fabric that stretches between them that gives some shade. It doesn't get, create a lot of um, wind um, resistance. It doesn't create, it, it wouldn't be hard to move if you had to do something. And if, if you were gonna put in a basketball court, it wouldn't, and it wouldn't take 10 years to provide the shade. Uh, have you given that any thought? And what's your reaction to something like that? I've seen. It looks like sails with, a, with some kind of a cloth. That yeah. it's, uh... I mean, I, I've been I've been watching I've been watching the kids play, you know, out there on both playgrounds for years. And I think when they get hot there, it's a parent's responsibility to take them out of the sun. I, I really don't want to put any trees in that area. And I, I think that, you know, there's there's a certain time when kids are overheated that, you know, they need to come out of the sun, they need to hydrate. And I think that's, you know, a reasonable way to, to approach it. If we want to look at something later on, that's fine. But I, you know, the trees, it's not the cost. It's just, it requires, it requires more maintenance. The root systems come up and they can get underneath the playground and destabilize that. I, I think that it's a good idea, but it's it just right now, I just think it's, it's not appropriate for what we're trying to do. Well, what about something other than trees? Uh, and then, and then, you know, I can't, I can't agree to something that I know nothing about. I've never seen these sales. I've never priced them. I've never, I don't know about the installation. So to have it be, in my mind, in order of condition, something that I don't know anything about, I, I don't, I can't really agree with that. Uh, can I, talk I, would, I would look at every playground in Amherst, whether it be in the schoolyard or over by the over by the town pool. I mean, there are there are not shaded areas. There are wide open playgrounds where kids play, you know, on the slides. And when it's time to go, you know, or cool down, then they cool down. Uh, can I actually ask a question here about that? Um, 
the site plan yep. there. What are the heights of those those two buildings on either side of the uh, the playground there? Uh, the buildings are about 33 feet tall. And then what is the distance um, from either of those buildings to the playground itself? Uh, approximately 35 to 38 feet. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I, I personally am uh, inclined to agree um, with uh, Alan on this one. Of I, I don't think the shade would be necessary. And I do think that the buildings would provide shade through... Uh, a lot of the day and they're not so far that if you know parents had to sit back and say uh, a lawn chair or something like that um, to stay in the shade that seems like it would be a reasonable solution and uh, I, I, I don't think especially where there's there's no shade there currently I, I don't think that would be uh, something we we should tack on uh, to this project. Um, I had another question. Um, tell me about playground grade mulch. I'm not sure what that is. Um, basically, I, I spoke to to Bill, who is the the project manager for Taylor Davis, um, a couple, about a week ago about what he would recommend, and he was going to look into it. So yesterday, after we had the meeting, I called Bill. I said I really need an answer from the commission tomorrow night. He said, um, I know we had the discussion about the cancer that was created by some of the recycled plastic material, and originally that was something that was recommended to me by one of the manufacturers but I just was not comfortable with it. So what, uh, what Bill said that they viewed Taylor Davis has used before at UMass and other public areas, and I believe that includes the town of Amherst also, is what they call playground mulch, which is a certified wood product. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a soft cedary mulch. So if, if, you know, kids should fall on it as they will, you know, coming off a slide or whatever, it's not going to be hurtful to them, but it's certainly not going to be as potentially dangerous as some of the carcinogenic um, materials that they put down, you know, over the past decade, which now they're removing because they're finding that, that, that uh, high school students have had health issues because of it. Sure. So, the, so the you've got, there's, that is a, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm just saying, so the mulch is small pieces or, or is it big chunks and how deep is it going to be? No, no, Mr. Judge. It's um, it's just small pieces that uh, that that they would use, that Taylor Davis would use in any circumstance that was similar to this play areas, playscapes, place where you know where kids play. It's 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 a certified mulch product, not like you would use in your garden, but something that's smaller and more gentle, uh, you know, for kids playing on it. Steve and the, Steve. And the depth. Yep. Take take a look. Just we'll put put it up on a. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, up on the web page here. Can you see that? Play safe material. Oh, that's Good. A Thank you. That's a okay. Yep. And then the depth, that, the depth that you have to apply that. Uh, you had a drawing of that, and I just didn't. Yep. Let me uh, uh, get, let me get you I back didn't, up. Didn't me, note it. I can't remember off the top of my head. Bear with me. Okay, there we, we didn't really, it's, but it's based as a four by four, so you're talking about three to four inches. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, if we use four by four um, wood to to create the barrier itself, then we would we would put in, you know, at least, you know, three to four inches of the of the mulch material. And that would that would keep it flush with the top of the uh, the, the wood ties. So nobody would there would be no tripping hazard and everybody could just run, you know, right from the grass onto the mulch at, at a similar plane. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have a question. What is the uh, maintenance uh, requirements for uh, this um, type of mulch? Do, does this need to be raked uh, routinely or is this, uh, you know, uh, or w what is it specifically? Bill indicated to me that it was just something that would that you know as you run on it, it gets compacted. He said you might find that every year in the spring you might have to get you know a, a, you know a dump truck full of material you might have to get two or three yards of some mulch and re maybe refresh it and rake it around. But in terms of um, its longevity, it's it's a material that's made to stay outside in the elements, and so whether it be rain or or snow melting in the spring or whatever. It, the material seems to have longevity to it. 
Um, I have one other question. Um, you, the drawing has a, or the site plan has a tire swing. I don't see a, a picture of that. Are you going to keep that? Is that tire swing going to be there? Um, and is that just? Yeah, well, yeah it, I think it's an oversight because I, yeah. I have pictures with my phone and the tire is one of the pictures. So I an oversight that was not glad to mail you a, a to email you a, a picture of the tire swing um, you know if, if it's not part of the package but if you're just looking at a couple of posts on two posts on each end and a rope or a, some type of yeah some type of rope holding up a swing a single tire and well swing yeah, I'm, and I'm looking at it right now yeah. it's it's actually it's actually four round posts that are about, I'd say about 10 or 12 feet tall with a, uh, with a center beam between the two of them and the tire hangs on four chains. And so the tire itself has a, has a rotating pivot on top. So as you're sit, as a child is sitting in the, in the tire, whether they're swinging back and forth or side to side, or they happen to be going in a circular motion, there's a lot of room in, in terms of three to four feet between where the tire radius would be and, and the supporting posts. So the, the, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly substantial structure. It's not like just, you know, two pieces of wood with a tire on it. This is, uh, you know, four strong pieces of metal with, with the cross bracing and then a perpendicular piece across the middle that the, that the tire hangs from. Got it. Trying to find a picture for you. I mean, I've, I've got it. Maureen, if you want to give me an email address, I can, I can email it to you right now. Sure, go ahead. Sure, tell me what email that. address you'd like me to mail it to. Uh, it, here, I'll, I'll email you. Wait, do I? I think I have your email, Cohen. There you go. This is what it looks like. Oh, okay. Oh, do you have it, Mike? No, I don't have that picture, but it's similar oh, to this. Okay. No, so no, this, you're, this one only has two posts. The one that, that we're getting actually has four posts, so it's, gotcha. it's more it's more stable. Gotcha. Um, but that's the idea of it. It's I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, Maureen, give me give me an email address of either you or one of the commissioners, and I'll just send it to you right now. Okay, I just emailed you, so just respond back. But okay. it's, it, it's Pollock M okay. at AmherstMA.gov. Okay. Can While we wait for that, any other questions from board members? Ms. Parks? Um, so I, I don't know if I missed it or not, but are the, is the older swing set that's still there, the swing and the slide, are they staying where they currently are? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and I guess the only other comment that I would like to make is, in thinking about all of this, I'm wondering if maybe those dumpsters could be moved farther away from the playground, not as a condition for this project today, but just as you think about developing this with the basketball court, I think it would be nicer if those dumpsters were farther away from the play area. Yeah, what you will well, see, ma'am. What you and that was that was part of our original project, but then some of the comments we got back was it was going to require a counting of the parking spaces and a traffic study. So, so Mike and I decided that that would be part of the larger plan that we'll be bringing to you um, this summer. But, but yes, our intention was clearly to move the dumpsters probably another twenty or feet back into the complex and to put ourselves to put in there another 10 or so parking spaces which would be handicapped and the sidewalk would actually run between the two handicapped spaces which seem to be a, a more realistic location than where it is right now but that's something that we're going to come back to you with with our with our larger plan okay great thank you Maureen, I did send it to you. You should oh. be seeing it probably in a minute or so. Maybe you maybe you could distribute it to the other commissioners. Sure. Oh, I received it. Okay, so it's a photograph. I'll share yes, my screen. Photo that I took exactly. Perfect. Uh, hold on a second. Share screen. This. Can folks see oh. this? Yep. Ah, perfect. So there you go. There are the so four posts. That answers my question the, about safety. It goes a long. <laughs> there's a long way between oh, yeah, the tires it's, it's and a the very, posts. It's a okay. very It's yep. a very significant structure. Yep. Stru you know, safe for safety reasons. 
Yeah, that's not that's not the tire swing over the crick when I grew up. So yeah, that's much better. <laughs> no, yep. no, but but I would say that uh, given you're in my age, things that we used to do when we were younger are certainly not allowable right now. Although we did survive without without uh, much you know scratching, so I think we did okay. Yeah, who knows what damage we did? But we we <laughs> we're here. All right. Um, any other questions? Yes, I have uh, one. Yep, go yep. ahead. All right, Dave, go ahead. Uh, I Probably a question for Mike. Mike, uh, is there any evidence that the uh, mulch that's being proposed will meet accessibility requirements? Uh, well, it'll be well, a surface and uh, stable, slip resistant, that kind of thing. Uh, not any different than rubber. Rubber is a lot much slippier. Okay. Um, and stone would even be worse. I mean, I've seen some playgrounds, believe it or not, with pea gravel. Yeah. Does it, uh, um, does it, uh, wood fiber, isn't wood fiber ADA compliant? I don't know. Does it, do I, know? I don't, I don't know. I mean, my, my belief is that because the base, if you will, of the of the playground is something that that moves as people run on it. My my thought would be that if, if there was someone that was handicapped, they could they could get right to the playground and then they might need some assistance onto a swing or something. But I, I don't know of any material that would actually allow, say, a wheelchair to to run through it without the, the wheels or the tires of the wheelchair, you know, kind of digging into the the mulch or the rubber or whatever the, the material happened to be. Yeah, I just didn't know if uh, Taylor Davis could get more info about how compactable it is and firm it would be so that you could actually roll on it. Because a lot of times when we see accessible playground, it's really with rubber, um, which is something you can almost guarantee. But I'm, I'm not sure what this mulch is. It looks like it could work, but is there? I didn't know if there's anything out there that would give us a little more information on that. I will. I'll be glad to I've call seen, Bill. And I've Taylor seen some playgrounds. Some, some playgrounds that are rubberized. You know, to look into it. Mike, Mike, hold on one second. Yep. I was just saying, I I be glad to call. Uh, you know, Taylor and and Bill tomorrow morning. Have them look into a couple options, and you know, provide them to Maureen, and then she can send them to you. You can look at what different samples they they may have. Um, you know, as I said, I, I you know when I asked Bill what to use, he said stay away from the rubber because it's carcinogenic. He said this is what we use at UMass and for the town of Amherst. So I thought that was you know a good recommendation. But I'd be glad to. Look Look into something else yeah. for you to you know to review yeah so for uh, as reference uh, the town of Amherst is proposing a playground at Kendrick Park and they are using both a rubberized surface uh, for uh, manufactured equipment and then for the more naturalized playground area they have uh, engineered wood fiber and both surfaces are ADA compliant. So there are there are uh, materials out there that are fully ADA compliant. Um, All right. Well, I'd be, I'd be glad to look into it tomorrow morning with, you know, with with Bill and Taylor and see what, you know, they come up with and then provide you with the research that they that they come up with. So perhaps a uh, condition of this special permit is that the surface shall be ADA compliant. Yeah. Mr. Langsdale, you had a question? Yes, uh, we're talking about um, the safety and the uh, uh, composite uh, surface for uh, the playground. Uh, <clears throat> and yet uh, there are uh, swing sets and a, a, um, a slide that are there now uh, that have nothing under them except the hard earth. Should we make a condition that the uh, composite should also be uh, uh, place under those um, pieces of uh, equipment. Mr. Shaper, are they going to remain? Or are you removing the old swing and slide? No. No, we're we're gonna we're gonna leave them, and I have no problem. Uh, you know treating underneath the existing equipment in the same way we're doing this, which is putting, you know, uh, the, what, what I call railroad ties, but putting, you know, six by sixes around them and then same material around those swings and slides as we'll be putting in the, in the new area. I have no issue with that. Keep in mind, however, that those, those will be removed under the other project that we're proposing. 
So, um, but but that's not what's before us tonight. Yeah. So we have to look at what's before us tonight, and uh, I think it. I think we need to make that a condition uh, for this uh, permit. Other questions, comments, anything else that you want to provide us, Mr. Schaefer or Alan? Uh, no, I think no. I think I think you know we were we were going to um, you know do something with the existing equipment just because when I looked at it yesterday, I didn't realize the ruts had had formed underneath the swing. So you know we would have addressed it anyway. But if you want to make it in order the condition, I, I have no problem with that because we were going to take care of it anyway. Okay. Um, so this is the point where we would, um, unless there's any other questions from the board or from the staff, this is the point where we'd open up to public comment. Uh, I see we have two attendees, both um, DBA members. I don't know if the public, if they have comments or anybody else does. I guess if anyone has comments, press the right. button. They gotta, they gotta raise it. <laughs> press that button. Raise, raise your, your hand. hand. Button. I have one more question. All right, Ms. Parks. Um, do, um, and this is really maybe to Maureen and Dave, is um, do we, should we add a condition that um, they will, that uh, the services will be maintained in good condition? Uh, that's, yeah, that's a good idea. It's one of the possible conditions listed. Yeah. Okay, and that the sidewalks at the side that the sidewalks, the whole playground area and sidewalks would be maintained in good condition. Yeah. Yep. Okay. If there's no um, public hearing, I'll close off the public public comment part. If there's no public comments, I'll close off the public comment part and um, close the uh, the public hearing. Um, and now we'll move to the public meeting where we will, uh, do I need to vote for that public, to close the public hearing? The public comment part, I don't think so. I just move right to the public, to the further discussion by the board. I think, Maureen. Uh, yeah, uh, you don't need to make a motion. No. Um, then a so it seems to me that we, there's several questions, um, conditions that we should consider when discussing this um, um, application. And those have been mentioned by the, by the members. Um, first off um, is we had, we want to have a condition on the, on the, um, the playground surface material, that that material is ADA compliant. And so I think that's one condition that we spoke about. And that I think can be that it should be ADA compliant. Um, I, I don't think we should say that this that leave it up to the building de department to determine that. It should just flat out make it ADA compliant. Secondly, um, there are no picnic tables in the plan. Um, the existing swing set will be um, uh, the, the surface of, will be resurfaced as as the same as the um, new playground equipment. Tire swing we've dealt with. Um, remove a small lip of the sidewalk to make it ADA compliant that um, they had mentioned early on in the presentation. Uh, maintain the, it's one of the, the staff suggested um, conditions is to maintain um, um, material and replace if necessary, all the um, surface material. Um, and I think those are the main issues. And then the other one is the, I'd like to have some discussion about the shading. And it seems to me that one possibility is that, um, that we require the applicant to consider, um, if he's, consider different methods of providing shade uh, w within a year or with, with the next application for, for a larger uh, project. So just that they come back for a meeting if there is no project, if there is a project, but there's some consideration given to providing shade at that time when this larger project comes in. And we don't have a, there's no promise that the larger project's coming in, I guess uh, it's your intent, 
but that's why I would have come back in a year to the board saying, we've given this some thought, here's the experience, it's needed, it isn't needed, or here's the way we can, we propose to, to provide some form of shade. Okay. I'm okay. Sorry. Sure. But I, board members, um, Dylan, I know you had some thoughts on that and so did Joan, I had some thoughts. Tammy, go ahead. I also have a comment. Uh, when we were there um, yesterday at 1230, it was uh, very sunny and warm. However, we were able to stand in the shade next to the buildings. And so when you, you could fit a chair next to the building. And so um, I will say that the buildings do provide some shade from re relief from the sun if that if someone really needed that. Okay. Uh, I'd like to address that. Um, yeah. Earlier, uh, Mr. Schaefer said that the buildings were uh, on the east and west side. They are, in fact, I believe, north and south, not east and west. So that has to do with how much shade would be provided by any of those buildings in the summer months because the sun is very high. So how much more uh, than what we saw there yesterday, which was only a couple of feet, and yes, one could put a chair there, but then what well, that means one has to bring a chair if you don't live in that building. So I think the, the uh, idea of, uh, uh, or of looking at the possibility of providing shade is a very important one. Any other conditions um, that we should consider that, members want to discuss. Um, uh, let me just... Yeah, just, just uh, simply that um, the, uh, the, the new equipment that's being proposed for the uh, uh, playground will be uh, positioned and located uh, as per the plans. Right. We should have the, a, a condition that the project should be built according to plan and the approved plans maintained if needed substantial change from the approved plan shall come back before the Zoning Board of Appeals at a public meeting. Uh, list the, and then we would list the plans of, as we receive them, along with the notations that are made at this meeting on the sidewalk, uh, the material ADA compliance. Um, as you said, the condition on that, that the playground equipment site furnishing and ground surface be maintained in good, good condition, and that the the sidewalk uh, be maintained in good condition. I think those conditions, along with the uh, condition about shade and the previously mentioned conditions are the ones that I would like to see um, included. So do we, ha with those conditions, are there any, is there any, I, we have to vote in, because it's Zoom, we got to vote individually on this. Um, so I'd like to, I would move that we adopt those commissions, those conditions before we move to the 10.3 um, recitation that we have to go through. So I would move that we adopt the commission, the conditions that we had previously stated. Is it, do I have a second? Second. Um, so Ms. Parks, vote aye or yay. Aye. Or any discussion on the motion, excuse me, any discussion on the motion, I don't want to shut that off. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, specifically, what is, um, what are we including about shade there specifically? So, so the, my motion, my thought was to include that the, when they come back with a new plan, they have, they show some consideration for possible, they show that they've considered possibilities for providing shade. Okay. If they don't come back with a new, uh, new proposal within a year, they come to the board and say, here's what we've thought about it. We need it or we don't need it, but we've given it some consideration pursuant to your uh, interest. So that's what my condition, that's what I think a condition would be. Yeah, and then if they, they, they came back in a year and said, yep. we don't need shade, if we, the board, were to disagree and say, we think you do need shade, what would be uh, the board's I, ability in that case? If they don't have a new proposal before us, I don't think, and I'd ask Dave this, but I don't think we'd have the authority to, to require the new sh uh, a new action on their part. Okay. But not, not from the wording of my condition. You know, you'd have to make that an additional con wording that, you know, I don't think we'd be able to do it because the special permit has always already been granted and I don't think that would be um, doable. Does that make sense? Uh, Dave? Do you want to repeat that condition? 
So I would repeat the condition by saying that they, when they come with the next proposal, um, that they show some evidence that they've considered providing shade for this area in, of the playground, that there's something included in the plans that they've provided some consideration of uh, looking at trees, artificial structures, or the existing shade provided by the buildings that make the determination whether they do or do not need shade and they present it to us in the next proposal. If they don't have a next propos uh, another proposal in a year, then they do the same thing. They come back to the board and say, here's our thought on this. We've given it some thought. We've looked at two, these two or three things. Here's the, way here's the way we're approaching it. At least it gives us them an opportunity to explore it, uh, give it some thought, and for us to um, review it if they have a new proposal and to review it if they, um, when they come back in a year, if there's not a new proposal for that, prop for that area. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of a way to yeah. simplify it. Um, that if a new proposal does not come before the board in regards to the rest of the property within one year, that they should come back to the board in a, after in, something in a year, like that. Yep, yeah, come back to the board in a year with a um, with a proposal for shade if needed. It, for shade if needed in their judgment, right. Based upon, yeah, that's, we don't have to be, any, be more specific than that. Yep. I mean, I'm, and just, just to go back one more, did, was there a condition on the accessibility surface, accessible surface? Yeah. Yes. Kind of yes. zoned for a minute, sorry. <laughs> yep. Okay. Maxfield. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say that, um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not uh, opposed to that uh, condition necessarily. Uh, I, I'd certainly vote for it. But uh, is it necessary, considering that if they come back in a year without uh, the other proposal, we don't, we don't have any authority either way to, to have them put in shade that, uh, is it worth any of our, our times to, to put that in there to have them come back in a year and say, hey, we looked at it and you know, this is what we found and we're found we need shade, but we're not putting it in because there, there's- Well, no that would be, it would be I, that's, a, that's a good question. I think what it does is addresses a concern that is held by several members of the board that there ought to be some consideration given to shade. Uh, hesitance on our part to try to force it at, at, this, at this exact moment when we know there's additional development going on. And I think if they come back and say that we, there needs to be shade, but we're not gonna do it, it would be a, uh, I think there's an inhibition to respond that way to a request that they uh, examine whether the shade ought to be there or not. So I think it provides us with some confidence that this has been looked at by people who've given more thought to it than we've been able to give to it at this meeting. And so we, the issue can be addressed is, is I think the positive aspect of that. Okay, I would, uh, yeah, I support that condition. Mr. Judge? Yes, Mr. Langsdale. Uh, the other thing that we can do is <clears throat> rather than putting that condition is in is if the board feels that there should be real consideration given to uh, shade for this uh, area, we can continue this and have them go into it now so that when they come back, then we still have uh, our uh, ability to, to make uh, conditions because uh, mm -hmm. public meeting, if they come back and say, no, we don't think we need any, that's it. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, I'm, I don't, I would not want to, I'd be concerned about delaying the project for however long it would take to do the study, to put the, together the information. Um, and I think there is, it's, it is um, questionable one way or the other, whether it's, there's sufficient shade there or not right now. And I would, I would prefer, my thought on this one, Mr. Langsdale, is that we give them the opportunity to come back to us, assess it, and we either, if they do have a new project, we can deal with it then, which sounds very likely. And the, if they don't have a project, which sounds less likely to me, there's some ability to, to ask them to come back and show us, demonstrate that they've given some thought to it. We may not have a, a leverage at that point. We certainly have a leverage if they come back at an early, at, with another project that sometime in between the, in the next year. Right, all right. 
All right. Any other questions about or any other comments or amendments to the condition uh, list of conditions? Okay. So those conditions are there and now and now we have to go through um we go ahead, Keith. Did we had a motion on the on the floor, didn't we? Yes, we did. We had a motion on the floor to approve the conditions. And Ms. And Park we, seconded it. Yes. Seconded. And now and that was the discussion, and now we have to vote on it. <laughs> and so I'll call the roll. Uh, Ms. Parks. Aye. Mr. Langsdale. Aye. Ms. O'Meara. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Maxfield. Aye. Um, and I vote aye. Motion carries. Um, now we have to make findings from 10.38. Um, 10.380 and 10.381 deal with uh, whether the app, the proposal is suitably located in the neighborhood in which it is proposed and or the town as is seen as deemed appropriate by the special permit granting authority. The proposal is compatible with existing uses and other uses permitted by right in the same district. Um, I think we find that the proposal plays ground for the use of tenants that reside at Colonial Village is suitably located in the neighborhood and in the parcel. 10.382, 10.383, 10.385, 10 and 10.387. These deal with uh, proposals would not constitute a nuisance due to air, water pollution, flood, noise, odor, dust, vibration, lights, or visually offensive structures or site features. The proposal would not be a substantial inconvenience or a hazard to abutters, vehicles, or pedestrians. The proposal reasonably protects the joining premises against detrimental or offensive uses on the site including air and water pollution, flood, noise, odor, dust, vibration, lights, or visually offensive structures or site features. The proposal provides convenient and safe vehicular or pedestrian movement within the site and in relation to adjacent streets, property, or, or improvements. We find that the proposal will not constitute a nuisance due to air and water pollution, flood, noise, odor, dust, vibration, or visually, visually offensive structures or site features. 10.384, adequate and appropriate facilities would be provided for the proper operation or the proposed use. I don't think that uh, finding is applicable to this project. 10.386, the proposal ensures that it is in conformance with parking and sign regulations. The applicant, uh, as they say, stated tonight, is not proposing any signage. Um, and I think that would, that was just stated by the, by the um, applicant. So I, I don't think there is a, uh, any violation of 10.386. 10.387, the proposal provides convenient and safe vehicular and pedestrian movement within the site in relation to adjacent streets, property, or improvement. If the special permit granting authority deems a proposal likely to have a significant adverse effect upon tra traffic patterns, it shall be permitted to require a traffic impact report and the proposal shall comply with the sec with section 11.2437 of the bylaw. The applicant is proposing bituminous concrete walkways connecting the tenants to the playground from the adjacent residential building. The proposed walkways on the easterly side of the playground connect to the existing walkway the existing walkway leads to the adjacent parking lot. The board may wish to ask whether the applicant are ADA compliant, and we did. Um, and we have also had a con uh, condition to remove a lip that would be uh, an impediment to movement on the, the one sidewalk. 10.388, the proposal ensures adequate space for off-street loading and unloading a vehicle. That is not applicable to the project. 10.389, uh, mess, uh, this deals with disposal or storage of sewage, refuge, and recyclable. That's not ap applicable to this project. 10.390, proposal ensures protection from flood hazards as stated in section 3.228. Um, that's not, ap the property is not in a flood zone, so this is not applicable to the project. The proposal protects to the extent fe feasible, unique, or important natural, historic, or scenic features. That is not applicable to this project. 10.392, the proposal provides adequate landscaping, including a screening of adjacent residential uses, um, provision of streets, trees, landscape islands, and parking lots. 
um, where natural undisturbed vegetation may already exist on site or to the site preparation and clearing, the majority of that vegetation may be retained. Um, we have found that the pro overall property is well vegetated and this application um, meets the requirements of 10.392. 10.393, the proposal provides protection from adjacent properties uh, by minimizing the intrusion of lighting, including parking lots and exterior lighting. The applicant is, is not proposing any exterior lighting so this finding is not applicable to the project. 10.394, the proposal avoids to the extent feasible impact on steep slopes, floodplains, or scenic views. Um, this, this, um, this is not applicable to this project. 10.395, the proposal does not create disharmony with respect to the terrain, the use, scale, and architecture of existing buildings. This is a playground. Um, this is not a question of, um, size and scope, um, we find that this is not applicable to the project. 10.396, the proposal provides for screenings of storage areas, uh, utility buildings, dumpsters. Um, this is not applicable to the project. There's already screening for, there's nothing new there and there's already screening existing on the property for those items. 10.397, the proposal provides adequate recreational facilities. Um, that's what the proposal is about. We find there's meets that requirement of 10.397. And lastly, 10.398, the proposal is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of this bylaw and the goals of the master plan. Um, we find that this application meets this finding. Um, so those, those are our, the uh, findings. Um, I move that we approve with conditions the um, application DBA 2020-35 from Colonial Village for construction of a uh, uh, playground with conditions. Um, is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All right, um, Mr. Maxfield. No, now we'll vote on the motion. Mr. Maxfield. Aye. Ms. Parks. Aye. Mr. Langsdale. Aye. Ms. O'Meara. Aye. <laughs> and I vote aye. aye. <laughs> and I vote aye. It's voting twice. <laughs> yep. That's an unanimous vote. Uh, the motion is carried and the application with conditions is approved. The special permit application with conditions is approved. All right. Thank All right. you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and your, your uh, uh, coming out to the site. I, I do appreciate, you know, very much your giving up your, your personal time for well, this good luck with it. Um, application. And we look, we, good you. luck with it. And we look forward to seeing you for the, in, the, in the future project that you discussed. Absolutely. Thank you. The next order of business uh, for tonight is consideration of the rules and regulations for the Zoning Board of Appeals. I'm going to move that we continue this to our next meeting. Uh, we had the John Witten put together a, a significant rewrite of the rules. It's lengthy. It doesn't sub substantively change very much, but it includes much more than it did before. Uh, we're going to sit down with him, the staff, and him and go through it. And, but I wanted to make sure that we were able to provide you with a a recommendation that was well thought through where we had enough time to do it and give you enough time to look at the rules and regs before we uh, ask for a vote on that. And I think we'll, we're going to meet with him first thing next week. We should have something available in terms of a, a, a red line version where you can compare what is the current rules and regs to what, we're, what would be proposed and have that to you so you can look at it for several days and digest it before the meeting. I didn't want to rush it and we couldn't get it done in time for tonight. So. I will do it for the next meeting and I think it will be a, a more a better process. In addition, it will not apply these new rules and regulations will not apply to the existing comprehensive permit that was filed or application that was filed recently. So they will operate under the old rules. We are adopting rules and regulations for the future. And if, uh, in terms of any pending applications for comprehensive um, permits or special uh, special permits until we approve the new rules. All right, any discussion on that? 
So I move we continue that to June 11th. Do I have a second? Second. Um, so we'll do now, is there any discussion? So all in favor of the motion, um, I'll do a roll call. I'm having a really hard time not doing this by voice vote. It's just not natural to me. Um, <laughs> all in, so Mr. Langs, I vote aye. Mr. Langsdale, how do you vote? Aye. Ms. Parks, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Maxfield, how do you vote? Aye. Ms. O'Meara, how do you vote? Aye. All right. Five ayes, it's unanimous. Um, it's moved till June, continued till June 11th. And thank you all for uh, your hour and a half of time tonight. We appreciate it very much and your work to go out to the site yesterday. Um, Is there uh, any public comment? Yes, thank you, Maureen. Um, this is a time when the public can speak to, on any issue that is not before the, the, um, the board and on our agenda. No public comment, uh, no hands raised. So I move that the meeting be adjourned. Is there a second? <laughs> All right, I'm trying to switch this up every time. So I vote aye. Mr. Maxfield. Aye. Ms. Parks. Aye. Ms. O'Meara. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> she was already gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and aye. Mr. Langsdale. Aye. aye. <laughs> okay. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. See you in two weeks. All right. And our next meeting is the 11th. Is that correct? That's so no yes. meeting next week. You guys have next week off. Wow. You guys have next week off. Yes. 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 <laughs> Super. All right. Thank All right. you very Thanks, much. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Good evening, everyone. Good night.